Hello again, and welcome to Advanced Physics for High School Students. This is Lesson 72, and it is entitled Kirchhoff's Laws. Back in Lesson 65, we were introduced to combined circuits, combinations of resistors and mixtures of series and parallel parts, and we developed a technique whereby we could combine the resistors in the circuit step by step into a single huge resistor and then we could work our way backwards to answer questions about the current through the voltage across and the power dissipated by each of the individual resistors. The technique involving a coloring of different conductors in the circuit using a Roy G. Biv scheme according to the electrical pressure or the electrical potential in each wire starting with red at the positive terminal of the battery and violet at the negative terminal and working our way around the circuit until all the conductors had been colored. This technique allowed us to visualize right away which resistors were in parallel with each other and which were in series. And then we solved the circuit using Ohm's law and the power formulas, applying the rules for currents, voltages, and equivalent resistances for series and parallel resistors. Now, we turn to a more complicated situation. Suppose now that our circuit contains more than one source of EMF, such as this circuit here. Oh no! Now what do we do? Our simple coloring scheme won't work in this situation. There's more than one battery. Some of the batteries are stronger than others. So how can you begin to assign colors to the different wires? This lesson introduces a set of techniques known as Kirchhoff's Laws for Electric Circuits that comes to the rescue. There are actually two rules, the current law, also known as the junction rule or the point rule, and the voltage law, which is also called the loop rule. And here's what they say. The current law says that the same amount of charge must enter a junction in a given time interval as the amount of charge that leaves the junction in the same time interval. This basically says that the current in is equal to the current out, and it's an expression of the law of conservation of charge. The voltage law, on the other hand, is a statement of the principle of conservation of energy. In words, it says that at any instant, the algebraic sum of the voltage changes, whether it's increasing or decreasing, around any closed path or any loop must be zero. So, in a conservative circuit, which are the only kinds of circuits you're going to encounter at this level, the energy of the charges around any path will be the same at the starting point and at the ending point. It doesn't matter which closed path that you take, the sum of the voltages around that closed path equals zero. If we were to apply Kirchhoff's laws to this circuit, we have some decisions to make. Let's suppose that we know all the resistance value and we know all the voltages. A typical question would ask us to find all the currents through the resistor. At first glance, it's not obvious which way the currents flow. It depends on the values of the batteries and the resistances. You might begin by trying to make some common sense analysis. Which way does this battery tend to push the current? What about this battery and that battery? You can assign directions any way that you want to, and all the math is going to come out okay in the end. However, once you assign the directions, there are certain consequences that follow. You may end up with some negative signs that have a physical meaning and interpreting that meaning is part of the problem. So let's take a look at this circuit and look at how we would apply Kirchhoff's laws. Let me remark that it would be difficult to solve this particular circuit and it would take quite a bit of time and we're not going to do that in this particular lesson. We'll take a look at some simpler circuits, but let's look at this one and see how we might apply Kirchhoff's laws. If we started with the 10 volt battery, we would see that this 10 volt battery tends to push a conventional current in the clockwise direction in the first loop. The 20 volt battery in the second loop, the 20 volt battery tends to push the current in a counterclockwise direction in the middle loop. And the 30 volt battery tends to push current in the clockwise direction. Let me extend these currents to the other parts of the loops. So far, so good. It appears that the current through R1 is going to flow downward, and so it seems fairly safe to assign that direction to I1. Similarly, for R3, it seems that the current's going to flow downward through it, too. 
Now what about the current through R2? This one is a little trickier, but it looks like both the 20 volt and the 30 volt battery tend to push the current up through R2. And so we can probably pretty safely make that assignment. Last but not least, what about R4? Which way is the current going to flow through it? It's not necessarily clear to me from the start which way it's going to flow, but arbitrarily I'm going to assign it a direction. I'll assign that direction to the left because it looks like the 20 volt battery would tend to push the current to the left through that resistor. Now, if I get to the end of the problem and after I've solved all of the algebra, I find that I get a negative value for I4, then I know that I chose the wrong direction and the actual direction of the current would be the other way. Numerically, the magnitude of the current will come out correctly but the sign of the current will determine the direction based on the arbitrary assignments that I made at the beginning. Let me pause here to say that it doesn't matter which way that I assign the current through each of these resistors. I could have assigned them the opposite direction. At the end of the problem though, if I end up with negative numbers, then that tells me that the initial assignment I made was the wrong direction. So look for negative signs in the currents to tell you something about the directions. And I've got to stick with those directions as I solve Kirchhoff's laws. Now in this circuit, there are four junctions. There's one here, there's one here, there's one here, and there's one here. For illustration purposes, I'm going to choose the top right junction to apply the junction law. But the law will hold true for all the junctions. So at this junction, the current law becomes that I2, which is the current that is approaching the junction, must be equal to I3 plus I4. That's the current that's going away from the junctions. Of Kirchhoff's two laws, I think the current law is the easier one to grasp. Now, let's apply the voltage law around, say, this middle loop. I'll label the corners of the loop with letters to keep myself straight as I go around the circuit. Starting from the bottom left hand corner and going in the clockwise direction, I have A, B, C, and D for the corners of that loop. Now note well, I must adopt a sign convention for increasing voltages and decreasing voltages. Doesn't matter which way that I sign the signs, but once I've done that, I have to stick with it throughout the problem. As I pass through a battery, if I go in the direction of boosting the potential, then I'll write a positive sign for that voltage. As I pass through the resistor, the direction of the assumed current tells me which side of the resistor is at higher potential and which is at lower. If I go with the current in the resistor, I'll write a negative sign for that voltage. But if I go against the current in the resistor, that voltage must be positive. Let's start at the bottom left hand corner of this middle loop and write out the voltage drops with the sign convictions. The sum of the voltage around the loop A, B, C, D and back to A has got to be equal to zero. Starting at point A and going through resistor R1, I see that I'm going against the current. So what that means is that this point down here at R1 is at a lower potential than this point on the top of R1 if I assumed this current I1's direction the way that I've done it. So I am increasing potential and so I will write plus I1 times R1 for that particular voltage drop. Now going from B to C when I start here and pass through R4 that way I see I'm going against current I4 so this left side according to this assumed current is lower in potential than the right side is. So I would write plus I4 times R4. Now going from C to D I'm going against current I2 and so I would say this point of the resistor is at a lower potential than this one so that means I'm raising potential here and now I'm going to write plus I2 times R2 and now going from D to A I see that I'm going from the high potential side of the battery to the low potential side so I'm going to write minus 20 volts and that's going to be equal to zero. So here is an application of Kirchhoff's loop rule for that particular loop in the circuit. I can write similar equations for whatever loop I want to. Let's suppose for instance that I wanted to go around this whole big loop, the whole perimeter. If I call this corner down here E and the top corner F and then I've got B, C and then over here at the top 
corner I've got G and down here I've got H I could go around the loop E F all the way to G down through H and back to E again I could choose that loop if I wanted to alternatively I could choose a loop that includes two loops in the circuit doesn't matter which way I go clockwise or counterclockwise but this is loop E F C D E I could choose another loop I could go around this big loop right here so starting at point A A B G H A I could choose that loop doesn't matter what loop that I choose I can write Kirchhoff's loop rule for that particular loop that's in the circuit when I finish I'm going to end up with a series of several equations and several unknowns and it's that system of equations that I have to solve to use Kirchhoff's law to figure out what the currents and powers are in the circuit. Your textbook examples are not as tough as this one that we're looking at here. So let's look at one of them and then move on to another example of my own making. Example 72.4. The potential of the battery is 10 volts and R1, R2, and R3 are 2 ohms, 4 ohms, and 7 ohms respectively. The current through the battery is 2.2 amperes. Determine A, the current through R2, and B, the current through R3. It's possible if I wanted to, because this only has one battery in it, to do my coloring scheme. You might ask the question, Mr. Haynes, should I use Kirchhoff's laws to approach a circuit, or should I use the coloring scheme? And what I would say is you do what makes sense to you at the time. What I hope that you see is that in this circuit, R2 and R3 are in parallel with each other, and that combination is in series with R1 and the battery. Let's actually try to do this using Kirchhoff's law. In order to do that, I need to make the assumption about some currents in the circuit. And the way that the battery is oriented, I see that in this first loop, this left-hand loop, the current looks like that the conventional current will flow in the counterclockwise direction. Since there's no battery in the right-hand part of the circuit, then if current flows up through resistor R2, then it's going to flow down through resistor R3. And so I'm going to choose that direction for the current in that particular circuit. With those things in mind, I have to assign a direction to the currents in each of the resistors. It looks to me like that I1 would make sense to flow from left to right, that I2 would tend to flow from bottom to top, and that I3 would tend to flow from top to bottom. I'm going to assign those current directions arbitrarily. Now, with that said, I'm going to look at the junction rule, the current law, as it looks like it approaches junction A. In junction A here, it looks like I3 is going to approach the junction there, and I2 is going to be going away from junction A. So that I could write the junction law, the current that comes in has got to be equal to the current that goes out. So I could write I1 plus I3 has got to be equal to I2. That's the way I'm going to write that equation. 